Hey everybody, we are in the World of Warcraft Dragonflight Beta. I am Napalm Dawn, and today we're going to take a look at the customizations of the new Drakthir race, which gives you the Evoker class. Right now, it is a one to one relationship. Evokers can only be Drakthir, and Drakthir can only be Evokers. So we're just going to go over the customization of the dragons in this video and also the dragons that you ride that you can increase your customization of that by simply just being out and out in the world. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is body size. You can be thin, thicker, thicker still, or thickest. So there are the four body styles you can be. Your primary colors, you have 15 of them. You have red, kind of a brownish gray, um, burnt umber, to quote my Crayola 64 colors of crayons when I was a kid, um, more of a golden yellow, kind of bronze, I guess, typical green, a darker green, a more lighter green, but kind of bluish, light blue, dark blue purple um kind of a wine i guess you could say would be this color um a ready purple a little bit red pink black which is what i am currently gray very light silvery gray and a kind of um eggshell color actually this color looks pretty good the current adornments i have on my drag theater which is um, Bickel Nolus, which is based off of Nicol Bolas from Magic the Gathering. I don't really know much about that particular uh, dragon in Magic the Gathering. I just happen to remember the name. And when I started off and I made this guy black, I was like, huh, that kind of looks like Nicol Bolas, but all variants of that name were taken. But this, this is a pretty cool color. I like the way, I like the contrast of everything in this sort of like beige -ish -y eggshell. I'm not going to go back to my black. Your secondary color strength can be strong, medium, subtle, or none. Uh, here's mine at subtle, some pretty good definition. None basically means your primary color takes over completely. Secondary colors range from uh, some browns into some more yellowy browns. This one is actually pretty cool up against my current skin a light green a light blue sort of very pastel there a lighter gray a kind of white and a kind of purple you can also change up your body pattern from none to ash char smoke and cinder cinder actually uh, smoke shows up pretty well on my current track there um I think it actually fits a little bit better than Cinder. There's more definition to it, so I'm going to switch it to Smoke. Your body markings can be None, Truth, Myth, Oath, and Wrath. You can customize your marking color. And you can see here, so this blue is pretty good, but then this gray is very samey so you want to make sure the colors that you set um offset pretty well this number three actually has a lot of definition um against my current skin but it's i don't like the color blending of this one it's kind of like tiger king but we have these 11 colors the light blue looks pretty good against me gray is too samey i just look very ashy uh, there's that kind of wine color a little bit. That actually looks pretty good. The purple and uh, another purple red. You can change your chest spikes from none to having chest spikes. And they, they're actually more up on the shoulder uh, than anything. And you can turn leg spikes on or off. And it just basically puts a texture over your current skin. For your horns, you can change them of, uh, this is one of the ones where it's the biggest. There are 20 options here. You can 
No, but I don't think there's going to be too many nuns out there that just kind of changes you from a lizard, that changes you into a lizard or an iguana from being um, dragon based. But you have nun, swept, sleek, coiled, ridged, sickle, plated, thorns, curled, curved, hook, bolt, subtle, low stag, high stag, broken, which where one horn is broken, the others are, are okay, arched, grand, jagged, and scythe. Um, the last few look pretty interesting from the front. There's grand, jagged, and scythe. Grand, I think, is one of the um, it's actually one of my other favorite ones. And Scythe is also pretty cool. You can set your horn colors and you've got 15 choices there. Um, so, I mean, you, you can definitely make a Drakthir that is colored after the dragon flight of your choosing um, by far. Horn Jewelry, none. The Guard bands and the chains uh none looks pretty good um very raw looking horns over there very natural i actually think none is pretty solid i like the guard because it gives you something else you can color in there uh chains seems one of the most ornate and then you can change the color of your jewelry so you can either make everything all very samey colored and sort of really role play an RP into being a Drakthir of a specific dragonflight like make everything green or everything ruby and then your crest is the back of your head over there on your neck small medium large which really medium and large the, these shouldn't be the names of it because as you can see by the large, it just changes the position more than making it bigger. I mean, it comes away from the body a little bit more, but in some respects, it's smaller than the medium fin. Horn, so you can go into a very, no pun intended, horny dragon, razor spikes, other bigger spikes, smaller thorn bumps, bone, and scales. Scales is kind of basically hair at this point you have faces there's only three of them there isn't too much variation there your snout there is about 18 of them and it changes basically um, what it says your snout it's really the nose tip that changes um, some of them are definitely pretty good like horned and some of them from the front if you get it kind of at this angle is a good way to tell you get a little bit of the side a little bit of the front some of them get a little squidwardy or um sauron from x-men the uh you know the marvel universe and everything face markings um some stuff along the side of the face over here you'll see some repeat names like myth and oath and wrath i've kind of generally stuck to oath Eyesight refers to which one of your eyes is colored. And then you can set the eye color and you have 14 shades over there. So as you can see, the customization is... I mean, this is some of the most customization World of Warcraft has ever had. It is like we're talking on par with like Skyrim and, uh, you know, offline RPGs. You can do glow, cross, and slip. Slit and cross really don't change up too much there. Um, your ears can be adjusted also, whether you have short, none, nubs, naturals, which is kind of elfish, notched, wing, uh, very uh, pterodactyl looking there. Short fin, kind of a little on the aquatic side. Long fin, short spikes, so I mean, you can absolutely go very, very far into the horn element of these dragons, or you can go into a more natural um, fin look to them.
horns, medium horns, and there's long horn. Cheekbones, clean, thorns, or bone, and that just kind of uh, what rests below the eye area. And then your throat over here from the front. Small fins, medium fins, large fins, thorns, and spikes. You can set a helm. And the reason why you can set these helms over here is because of the fact that you cannot transmog that much gear onto yourself when you are in the dragon form. When you're in your human form, you have transmogs like normal, but on dragons, you don't have a lot of transmogrification that you can do, and that probably absolves Blizzard of coding crazy helms and shoulder pads for these guys, which can be really tough. I mean, for many years, they had issues with Torin and Orc being um, as big as they were. So you can set a crown, a visor, a galley or a shako. Um, I choose to have a more natural look to my dragon, so I'm not doing many of the armor pieces over here. He's he's just kind of a naked boy, a naked scaly boy. Shoulders, you can do wings or spalders. Spalder seems to be grayed out for me. I'm not really too sure why. Chest, maybe you have to find these, um, which is why I can't pick them, but you can still see them. For the chest, you have Regal, Tabard, and Traditional. Um, Tabard's not too bad if it was just the chain part of it. I kind of don't like um, the centerpiece over there as much. Breastplate, Regal, and Aegis. Actually, I wonder something. If I can set Regal... Well, actually, let's try Tabard. Yeah, so it appears that you can chain... Well... No, you're not actually changing the ch the upper chest piece. You're changing what's in front of it. So that isn't too bad. It looks like a really solid breastplate um, over there. But I'm going to go back to none for that. Your upper arms, you can have either wings or rare braces. And that's the upper section of the arms over there. The wings isn't too bad for my character. I don't mind it too much. Your lower arms, you can do none. Bangles. Spikes and bangles. Van braces. Sleeves. Talons. And brace, uh, bracers. Bracers looks too clothy as the sleeves, but talons, considering Drakthir are a male class. Male is in M-A-I-L, sort of like plate. Um, I'm not that crazy about all of these here as they look particularly clothy, but I do like the talons, except for the fact that you're a caster class, so the talons are maybe a little bit more, um, warrior-ish, so I'm kind of sticking with the bangle. You can set yourself as to having some arm spikes, which I think you can only really see from the side. Yeah. So you can have spikes on your forearm down over there. You can also change your armor color, which I'll show it to you from the side. So that is about the extent of your armor when you're on your dragon. You can set waists, but more on waist in a little moment. Breech cloth is the sort of sash that goes over your crotch. You have regal, scaleborn, and traditional thighs, which is down here. These are one of the few things that I have on. None, chains, ornate, sheath, scaleborn, and tassets. I like ornate as it's fitting, but it's not over the top. Your wing decoration, you can have either none, a talon, or rings. Um, rings kind of makes my wings look very Illidan-ish. They look a little demon hunter when I go into the rings. Armor styles, not much is changing there. Uh, your tail that you can see down over here by the issue reporter. You can have either ending in just the tail, curtail which is shorter, a flail, a fin, 
heart, a club, a diamond, or a spade. And then when you're in your human form, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. My human is pretty ugly over here. I think that's because he actually has some gear transmogged at the moment. So it's gonna look a little bit interesting, but you can change your skin color. Um, you can definitely get pretty pale and you can get pretty dark brown. You have um, a multitude of faces over here. You have nine of them. Some of them definitely have that resting bitch face going on. You can change your hair. I'll get it to the side a little bit. You can be bald, warlocks, super saiyan, prince, which is... <laughs> I always call prince the Justin Bieber. Untamed, sideswept, short locks, mohawk, quiff, spiky, tousled, knot, tied back, top knot, dreadlocks, nomad, wild mane, braided, wavy, ponytail, and short. Some of these um, are kind of representative of the fact that they're not necessarily forcing a specific gender. Some of them are a little bit more of a feminine haircut, but you are still obviously in a masculine body there. You can change your hair lights, hair highlights over here, which is sort of the undertoning of the hair. Uh, you can have hair decoration or not. So you can see over here, um, there is some chain work going around the ear, coming off the forehead. You can change out the mustache portion and you can change out the beard portion too. Your horns also as a human can be changed and they pretty much follow the dragon ones. So broken, there you go again with the one full one, the broken, arched, grand, jagged, and scythe. These are not directly tied to your dragon form ones, you can absolutely change them up. You can uh, change the horn color. You can change the horn jewelry. I gotta admit with this change, don't I kind of remind you of the chick that was on Jabba the Hutt's um, pleasure barge? Or no, not the barge, He was. she was in his club and she tried to escape by pulling away at the chain and then she got dumped in the pit. Doesn't this look very similar to that? Uh, your scale markings, none, myth, or wrath. And that's just on the face. And then you can change your colors. As you can see here. For your head, you can choose to have um, a little circlet or chain up top on your forehead. Again, eyesight, left, right, neither, or both. Eye color, ears on the side, long, medium, and short. They're pretty elfish for the most part. You can choose what your earrings are. Um, sigils sort of like more dragon bones, but then you can have some rings cuffed, thorns, stake. Your nose can be adjusted. There's only two adjustments there. And you can also change your jewelry color. Um, this gray one actually is pretty cool for my outfit. Might want to think about changing that. You can have a chest strap. You can change your underclothes from on and off bottom on and off so you can be a bikini boy if you want to you can change the colors of your tops and bottoms and whether or not you have body scales so you can definitely make yourself look very very human or very very uh dragonish you have a button called visage which allows you to change back and forth between your human form and your dragon form except for your horns when you are in human form it is definitely hard to tell you apart from blood elves i would think but if you saw those horns over there uh that's the giveaway but you can definitely pass for um humanoid 
if you want to. So as you can see here, when looking at my human form, that is my current male-based transmog. And when I go dragon, not much of that comes over. A little bit on the shoulders and the waist. So if we visit a transmogger, which should be right in front of me, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I am looking forward to our negotiations. So what you'll see before me is mostly from my shaman and my hunter, which are my male characters. You can transmog the shoulders. So I have the default set, which I'm calling greenies, but then I have another set called uh, Flame On, which is mostly red, but you can only change your shoulders uh, whether or not you have a tabard on or off, and it acts pretty much as a standard tabard. So uh, the Drakthir tabard kind of fits this uniform. Um, pretty well. Let me see if I... I don't think I'm gonna have one that I like for greenies. There's the Olympics, Tavern of the Summer Flames, Summer Skies, Tavern of the Explorer, uh, Guild Tavern, which I don't have a guild in the beta, but the blank one actually kind of fits. Hujin, Ugrimar, and Tablet. Actually, the Tavern of the Protector looks pretty good with that, too. I may want to add that. If you go to sets, you have some battle gear from the intros, harvester's court attire from my uh, my shaman, the necromantle vestments from my druid, the fear stalker gear from my shaman being uh, venthyr, and the purchased vestments of the eternal traveler. Now, if I were to switch into my human form, welcome. And I go to transmog, you can see my options fully return to normal here. I'm not exactly too sure what's going on with these crazy bodies in the sets. These they're acting almost like void dummies, like void dressing dummies. But um there's my Venthyr gear, there's the vestments of the Eternal Traveler, there is human Drakthyr gear, more human Drakthyr gear so on and so forth. If I go back and look at the not sets, you can see that I have a full range of items over here. Honestly, the Jewel of the Fire Lord is really, really good <laughs> for Drakthir if you're running kind of a red mog. It seems to um, definitely fit You can look like one of the brokers if you want to, if you've gotten that. So right now, uh, here on Greenies, I'm running Crest of the Fallen. I'm running my Keldalar from Wrath of the Lich King. So this is how I currently look as a human, and this is uh, my other set. So that is the customization of your personage here in Dragonflight. And there is something else you can do where you can configure your dragon. Now when you're in old content and you pick a mount, it goes ahead and picks any of your normal flying ones. Because even though I'm currently in my Drakthir form, um, as you can see, I'm a dragon on a dragon. But you can also customize your dragon that you ride within Dragonflight, and that is part of the whole dragon riding experience that World of Warcraft is giving you. So we'll take a quick little pause so that I can get back over to the Dragonflight area, and you can see what it's like to customize your dragon. Alright, so we are back, and we're going to take a look at the dragon customizations to wrap up the video. So we are here currently over in Valdraken, which is in the zone of... Uh, this is going to be the capital city area. And this is what it looks like. It is a pretty congested city with stuff uh, 
all over the place. Although, from what I know, people are quite happy to see a city of this sort again, rather than just being a giant circle of what we are used to. So over here in Valdraken, the way to get to the Dragon Customization area is to go around this lower route over by the Artisans, basically. And when you do, you'll be down here in this area in the Artisan Market. You're going to pass this little hut on the right. And you'll come up this turn, take these stairs, and then you'll be in the Dragon Customization area. Kind of interesting how they have it in such a small out of the way place considering it's one of the more major components of this entire expansion. Do you if seek you knowledge? If you talk to Lithragosa, this is where you can go to your dragon riding skill tree and you can put points into it. I'm here up along the upper area. I'm already four notches into it and then the others are based on achievements. In order to get Come the see me again. talent points, what you need to do is around the zones, you need to hit these dragon glyphs. Once you do, you get a point and they will disappear from the map. Another customization area I do believe is over here at the, uh, the ruby life pools down over here in the waking shores this is the first area where you customize your dragon it's actually where you learn about it we will and, not repeat uh, our history as you can see here i only have two points currently and i cannot progress until i get three so i'm kind of stuck at this point i've already picked up five in the waking shores and one in Veldrassus. go and wizard. so going over here to this big sparkly platform that is where we can do well, the then, shop of our dragon. Let us proceed. It's also called the Rustrum of Transformation. And as I said, this one over here in the capital city is the second one that there you're going is a to come universal across. So you just step justice. onto the platform and click life. and you are taken to the dragon customization area. You'll notice the um, it bears a high resemblance to the proto drakes of WoW's history similar to Galakron and the ones that you would see in the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. It also really reminds me of the game called Dragon's Prophet, which was a relatively short-lived MMO that was all about taming dragons to use for your side. And when you would tame dragons, they could either become mounts or uh, soaring and gliding mounts or even pets. So this whole little sequence here kind of reminds me a lot of, of Dragon's Prophet. Uh, enjoyable game that I played with my girlfriend for a little while back during the Mists of Pandaria era, but it didn't last particularly long. Although it had a tremendous amount of mechanics that I really enjoyed about that game, and they were unique to it, and I've never seen it since. But Dragonflight kind of gets there a little bit. So you have three customization options across the top. You've got the body one, you've got the tail one, and you have the face one. To get different customization options, you basically have to do stuff out in the world. If there are specific ones that you know you want to get, you can probably find them on Wowhead, but you will just kind of encounter them as you go along. So for example, these colors. Uh, the default is the ruby for everybody. With Centaur Renown or Centaur Rep, you can get green. You can get bronze with Valdraken Accord. You can get blue with Tuscar, that's the Walrus People Rep. And black scales is just regular reputation. So everybody's going to start with the ruby. Uh, favorite color? Bronze is pretty cool with how I have my dragon currently. Blue is also cool, and black would actually go with my character. Skin scales, you can have either light or heavy. Horns, as you can see here, a lot of them are locked, but we have, again, just like the regular um, Drakthir horns, you can see a lot of the themes are the same. You have swept, 
curled, coiled, just ears, bovine, which is new, thorn, subtle, impaler, charger, which is what I'm using, and curved spiked. You can also set your horn colors, but again, you have to unlock these as you go along. You have patterns for your scales. Predator really reminds me of the game Evolve. The monsters had uh, a skin, I even believe it was called Predator, that looked very, very similar to this. You have Harrier and you have Sky Terror. Horn style, light and heavy. Heavy really gives it a segmented look and I bet you're probably gonna see a lot of this. And this one is going to be a world drop uh, here we have Professions, Dragon Scale Expedition, Dungeon Rewards, so they're all over the place where you can pick them up. Over here for the tail you have Spiked, Bear, and again this, this definitely remember uh, is reminiscent of what we were seeing for the Drakthir customizations. You have Club, which let's see if I can get it in view over here. Club, finned, maned, and spined. These all seem to be quests, but there are some world drops in there. The ones that you have, it doesn't tell you where you got them, so I can't, if you see one here in the video, unfortunately I can't tell you where I got it. Um, you also have spiked and finned for the throat area. Spiked and finned. Body armor could be saddle or saddle with armor. This armor is pretty cool. Looks very regal. And again, this one is going to be Valdraken uh, rep. Armor color is a two-tone deal. Uh, all of the colors for it are going to be two-tone. So you have some rep ones, you have professions. Valdraken again, achievements and professions. Dungeons actually seem to be pretty low. For drop sources um i think the gold and black is probably what i would go for but this gold and red currently fits the model that i've got going on and over here finally for the face you have snout options toothy snub razor which is the underbite kind of makes it look derpy but also kind of makes it look a little intimidating at the same time shark which is really changes the uh the whole structure of the face over here and you have beaked which is definitely very raptor like very bird like on that one toothy and beaked are similar but toothy is a little bit more dragon like it it sort of looks like there's an armor piece to the upper jaw and the lower whereas beaked kind of looks like that's actually how your skull is uh, I would probably, Razor or Toothy would probably be the ones that I would go for. Razor just looks really, really mean. Crest, it looks like I've earned a new crest recently. So you have None, you have Spiked, Spined, Hairy, Plated, Finned, Dual Horned, and Horned. Um, spiked or the one I'm currently using of Horned, I think I'll actually go with Spike little bit more trim so just with your character itself and your dragon you can definitely get a theme going on of whether you want to look sort of aquatic or bird like um, I mean you can totally make your mount completely exactly like yourself if you want to and I think that's interesting you can get a theme going between yourself and your your own mount jaw you have bear Thick spined, horned, hairy, spiked, thick spined a second time. That's interesting. I think they may be. Oh, they. Wow, that is a bad misspelling. They have thick spined over here and they have think spined over here. I think they meant to, th meant to say thick spiked. Because right below it is broad spike. That's good blizzard indie company development right there and then you have finned 
So again, you could you could go hairy between yourself and your dragon. You can go fin for the aquatic look. You can go really mean with the thick spikes and everything, or just mix and match. For your brow, you have bare, curved spiked, thick spiked, hairy, and spined. You can set a hair color if you're running hair. Eyesight, we've seen before, it just changes uh, which eye is glossy and which is normally uh, colored. And again, slit, glow, and cross, we've seen that on the humanoid changes. So there you go. That is the character customization and mount customization here in the Dragonflight beta. So you'll notice anytime I hit the random favorite mount, I always get the dragon and uh or the proto drake i guess i'll call it the drake i always get the drake because that's what this expansion is about and that is what your flying is while you're leveling now if you go to go back to your old content as you saw with me and dalaran you can get on any mode you want but if i try to if i try to mount anything else it just acts as a ground mount so you can walk around on the ground with your Amani Battle Bear if you want. But it's not going to be anything special. If you do the Proto Drake, you actually get into the dragon riding aspect of Dragonflight. And very, very quickly you can see that that is what Dragonflight is meant to be about. You'll be sitting there playing your low-level zones and everything, and you'll be thinking, wow, like, I cannot get to that herb over there, or I cannot get to that ore node. Well, the reason being is you're not really supposed to get to it until you get your dragon riding mount. And when you do, you can do things like build up speed, which is why you see these wind gusts along the side of me. And by building up speed, you gain momentum that allows you to go a little bit further. And then you can use your Vigor over here to use your Dragon Riding abilities. One of them, at least at this point, is Surge Forward, which is just a little bit of a straight up dash forward. And then you have Skyward Ascent, which is a boost. And actually, it looks like I'm right by a glyph. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get it. So I'm going to go down to build up a little bit of momentum. Forward. And there we go again. And there we go. Dragon Glyphs. Myrwood Fed. Nice little tutorial on how to get that one from the capital city. And when you get them, they stay out there in the world. They just go from the bright shining gold to a little placeholder over there. Your drake actually screams at you when a glyph is detected. I totally believe somebody's going to write an add-on to chill the drake sounds out a little bit because the drakes in this game are extremely noisy and annoying and I'm pretty sure we're going to see add-ons um, mute the drakes a little bit. You may miss out on the warnings that your drake will give you when you're near a glyph, but then again, it's so hard to miss, I don't think you need the drake screaming at you that there's a glyph nearby. And as you can hear, he just yelled, but I'm not going to have the vigor to get up there. It is time for my drake. And we're going to land right over here by a racetrack. And there is apparently a flight path over here that I haven't picked up yet, even though this area looks familiar. What did I just pick up? Hmm, I thought I'd been here. So, yep, we will do a different video on what it is like to do dragon racing. It is something built into the game, and you do get involved into it pretty early. I guess it's the equivalent of Swoder's 
um, space missions that they had you do. The only things that I found fun about the game uh, towards the end. Okay, playing it, but I actually enjoyed the space missions. Dragon riding is PVE where you compete the best time, but there were also PvP races. And I've heard some YouTube streamers doing PvP races, but I've never uh, tried it. But as you can see, because I'm on the ground, my vigor is recharging over here so that's basically how you get your abilities back as you just land and don't try to use them for a little while also when you are flying fast and you have that wind rushing icon near you uh that is also when you're going to be also how you effectively fly your proto drake riding all right guys so thanks for checking out the video this video is all about the Drakthir customization and the Proto Drake customization. We will definitely be back with Beagle No Less and some other videos, but uh, the next video up will be the Marvel Avengers Alliance Beta 4 release. Take care, everybody. See you later.